Jeep. Very old Jeep. 80s Jeep. Dangerous Jeep. Fun Jeep. I have won the air freshener war. It's because you basically took over the Jeep. Hello, and welcome back to Columbus, Ohio. I'm your cruise director, Kristen, and today we will take a walk through Eastland Mall. Eastland is one of three land malls that were built in Columbus in the late 60s and early 70s. There was a Northland, which was demolished in 2004, and a Westland, which sits vacant and neglected after closing to customers in 2012, awaiting redevelopment. Southland was conceived by a different set of developers and was described as being a smaller, discount-style mall. One thing I observed about this property is while the wall itself is only one story, the anchors are all multi-level, giving the entrance courtyards a big airy feeling and making the anchors seem enormous. At opening, Eastland Mall was home to a movie theater and was anchored by J.C. Penney, Columbus-based Lazarus, Sears, and Woolworth. The Sears store was one of the largest in the state when it opened. The store was unable to sustain a large enough inventory to fill both floors, and the second floor was closed in the 80s. All the anchor exteriors still maintain a very 1960s geometric aesthetic on the outside. The last significant remodel of the whole mall took place in 1989. The feel of this mall is still very much of the 1990s, which made me wish there was still a record store here. Here's an idea for you mall revitalizers out there. Bring back the neon, turn the lights down low in the evening, and turn some of the empty stores into private karaoke rooms. This place would be ideal for that. Woolworth closed in 1997, and the following year the space was remodeled into a food court. The food court still features marble and fake plants, all hallmarks of the era that I remember fondly. A Kaufman's was added at the end of the food court corridor in 2003. 
The same year, the mall was sold by the Jacobs Group to Glimcher Realty Trust. In 2005, Macy's went on a shopping spree, snapping up local favorite department store chains in a push for expansion. Among the chains they purchased were Kaufman's in 2005 and Lazarus in 2003, both of whom had locations at Eastland. In 2005, Lazarus closed their original location and the Kaufman's was converted to a Macy's. Macy's expansion bid led to many malls losing an anchor at this time throughout the country. They did not need two or in some cases three competing chains in one mall. The Lazarus building has sat vacant since 2005. Here's an innovative idea, borrowing the ancient snack machine from the local Jiffy Lube's waiting room. The dark windows overlooking the courtyard here were once an upscale restaurant that overlooked the mall. The blue tile was a Lazarus trademark, and since becoming Macy's, some locations have covered it up with white drywall. Such a shame. I'm glad I can still see it here. In 2008, Glimcher proposed to demolish the former Lazarus and replace it with a newly built JCPenney and convert the existing JCPenney off center court to additional inline retail space. Due to the real estate recession starting that year, this never occurred, and as you saw, Lazarus still stands empty. A small strip of exterior facing stores were added between Sears and Macy's, although most of the spaces remain vacant. The key store that remains open along the outside is an original tenant who operated out of a little shack in the parking lot outside Sears before moving.
JCPenney was the next of the anchors to leave in 2015, followed by Sears and Macy's in 2017. A charter school has begun to use the former Kaufman's, and I'm told that the Lazarus has been used for police training exercises. Eastland is in a tricky position. They sit with no anchors and essentially devoid of chain tenants. The neighborhood it sits in is unlikely to be able to support an open-air lifestyle center, of which revitalization projects are so fond. It's hard to tell what would be the best option for success going forward. I think many malls are facing the prospect of operating with few or no anchors, so it may mean that we see more non-traditional uses of these spaces. Thank you for watching. We appreciate the support of tweets, Instagram comments, and most of all, our patrons. We are happy to announce that we are this close to 800 subscribers. If you would like to contribute via Patreon to future adventures, please see the link in the description. I am Kristen, your cruise director. My co-pilot is Ron, and we are Unicom Productions. We will see you next time.